Not too long ago, a special friend of mine put in a good word to Banggood, and before I knew it, I had a Geek GK61 keyboard at my door for review. Special friend, you know who you are. Thank you so much. And a big thank you to Banggood for sending me this keyboard for review. Just FYI, this box was shipped in a plastic bag envelope, but the keyboard survived the journey just fine. The only thing I noticed was a pretty rough bump on the top left corner of the box. So the GK61 is a 60% layout mechanical keyboard with optical switches. It comes with a hot swap PCB. It's $60 US with about $6 shipping to Canada. It comes in black or white with six different switch options. I got the black keyboard as you can see with Gatoron optical black switches. In the box, you get the keyboard, keycap puller, switch puller, USB-A to USB-C cable, and instructions. Simple, nothing fancy. So this is my first keyboard using a 60% layout, the key omission being the arrow keys, which I personally cannot live without. I use my keyboard primarily for work and even for basic stuff like writing emails or using spreadsheets. It's pretty much torture if you don't have quick access to arrow keys. Clearly, the primary purpose of this keyboard isn't for office work, so I'll just leave it at that. The good thing is you can still use arrow keys if you really need them by holding the bottom right function key down with your pinky and then pressing those nearby keys conveniently printed on the stock keycaps. It's a pretty cool feature, and I appreciated the fact that a lot of additional function layer keys are also mapped to this keyboard. First thing I noticed when I plugged this keyboard in, the RGB lighting seemed dim. I wasn't sure if the keycaps were perhaps affecting this, so I threw on Taihao and Razer PBT keycaps, and it still seemed a little off, so I was pretty sure it was the lighting itself, but just to make sure, I then put the stock GK61 keycaps onto my Durgod Hades 68, and yep, the lighting is indeed a little dim. Which to me is a little bit of a disappointment because any keyboard with shine through keycaps rely on the legends lighting up and being visible in the daytime when it's going to be harder to read the legends. For those who are always in darker or dimmer rooms, this obviously wouldn't be an issue, but I think it's worth noting. The keycaps are double shot ABS with a 1.1 millimeter wall thickness, which isn't the best. That being said, I appreciate the fact that there's no light bleed from the RGB effects. This is one major gripe I had about the Razer PBT keycap set, which costs $30, half of what this keyboard costs. The font, I'm not the biggest fan of. It's a little too gamery for my taste, and if you want to switch the keycaps out, I honestly wouldn't blame you. That being said, you'll miss out on the convenient function layer keys that are printed onto the stock keycaps. You'd either have to memorize the layers or have the instruction manual handy if you want to get the most out of it. But if you are buying this keyboard, you're probably on a budget and would want to avoid incurring additional costs. Ideally, you're totally okay with this font and have no intention of swapping out the keycaps or you already have another keycap set you bought in the past. Now, the strangest thing about these keycaps, the texture. I don't know what to make of it. It's got this hard rubber feel to it. It's nothing like the gritty texture you would feel from a PBT material keycap. And I don't know what to call it other than just weird or strange. I definitely still would take this over a smooth ABS material, which is just a fingerprint and grease magnet. But I wouldn't say I enjoyed the feel of these keycaps. The texture does prevent your fingers from slipping though, which is nice. As for the case, it's a hard ABS plastic material and doesn't have a kickstand. You'll likely need a wrist rest when using this keyboard unless you have wrists made of steel or super long fingers that can reach the number keys really easily. The switches on this keyboard are Gatoron Optical Blacks. They have a 60 gram actuation force, which is 15 grams heavier than what a lot of you might be used to the Gatoron Reds or the Cherry MX Reds, which actuate at 45 grams. I opted for the heavier springs, as I'm pretty heavy fingered and I would mistype all the time on switches with lighter springs. Optical switches are much smoother stock compared to mechanical switches. These are no exception. They felt nice to use, and I actually found myself pressing the keys down constantly because they were just that smooth. 
aside from the ping you get from the unlubed springs, which can be fixed by taking these switches apart and lubing the springs with something like Crytox GPL 105 or 106. I really enjoyed using these optical switches. If you are thinking of getting this keyboard with any intention of modding though, I will warn you right now, it will be a very frustrating process. Based on my experience, the GK61 is the worst keyboard I've ever had from a modding perspective. And I'm not saying this because you can only swap these switches out with other optical switches. It is definitely a limiting factor not being able to put mechanical switches into this keyboard, but that's not why I'm being so critical. At every turn, the GK61 seemed to scream at me that it did not want to be modded. It needed an unreasonable amount of force to just remove the stock keycaps and removing the switches. I had to stop a quarter of the way through, not just because of, again, the force required to remove them, but also because my switch puller ends either bent or couldn't fit the narrow space between the top of the case to grab the top side of the switch to pull it out. That's what she said. Well, since the keyboard has plate mounted stab, I can at least remove that and then mod them to remove some of that baseball rattle. Until I saw pieces of foam under the plate that were glued literally right onto the PCB, blocking the wire from coming out. But that's when I just told myself, this isn't worth it. I just put everything back together and that was that. If this was going to be my daily driver, I'm sure I would have pushed through and did all of the mods. But the amount of pain that this keyboard had already inflicted onto my old man fingers and joints was bordering on abuse. <laughs> it is a little strange though, because I've seen YouTube videos of other people modding this keyboard, and it looked a lot easier to remove the switches. Maybe I got a dud, but I can only speak from my own experience. So, let's wrap things up. Is this a keyboard I would personally buy? Absolutely not. Not just because of the lack of dedicated arrow keys, which this isn't the keyboard's fault, but because it literally sucked all of the joy out of modding keyboards. Would I recommend this keyboard though? Actually, yes I would. If, for example, you are looking for an affordable optical keyboard alternative to the Razer Huntsman Mini, which costs twice as much as the GK61 at $120 US, I think the GK61 might fit the bill, especially if you don't care about this modding business and just want a keyboard that you just plug and play straight out of the box. On top of that, if you are used to the actuation distance and travel distance of Cherry MX and Gatoron switches, you might actually want to get the GK61 so you won't have to compromise the typing experience that you're already accustomed to. Razer's proprietary optical switches, such as the one you see on the Huntsman Mini, have a reduced actuation and total travel distance compared to the Cherry MX Reds, for example. I personally don't like the feeling of bottoming out mid-key press, but I know a lot of people like it. If I had to choose an alternative to the GK61 from Banggood, I would have opted for the Gamma K MK61 instead. It is also a hot swap keyboard that utilizes optical switches, but it also comes with sample switches that you can try and test out if you don't know the difference between tactile and clicky and linear switches, for example. 
It has PBT keycaps with better looking legends, has better and brighter RGB lighting. It is also Mac compatible and it costs $7 less. That being said, if the GK61 was on sale for $50 or $45, I think that's actually a really good deal. You should go for it. So that's it for today, guys. Let me know in the comment if you think my assessment was fair. I welcome your comments and constructive feedback because I want to constantly improve my processes and the quality of my content. Thank you all for the continued support, and I will see you in the next one.